Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to 2020. I want to give you guys an update on my inner monitor system. And this video is just going to break down what my previous state was and what my state is today. But don't get that confused with tomorrow because I will be changing it and actually upgrading it. But I wanted to document it for you guys so you can see what the transitional phase looked like for this. As always, if you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be giving you guys more updates on this, a little bit more product reviews than I did in the last couple years. And also I'm going to be breaking down some how-to videos so that you guys can learn how to set up your own backing tracks and other things associated with music. So happy new year. You guys take it easy and enjoy the video. Okay, this very first sheet that I'm going to show right here is actually my previous setup when I first got my essential um, items. So that's my case. That's the seismic case right here. The wireless inner monitor system is the PSM 300. That's a sure product. The Sennheiser EW100 uh, with the 935 capsule is the wireless microphone system. And the uh, Zenix 1202FX mixer is a Behringer mixer. So let's break this down. So the prices are pretty straightforward. And I'm going to show you item for item what they kind of look like. So this is the Seismic um, ATA case. And I got this because I was traveling and going to different gigs so I needed something to put everything in and when I bought it it was 129 um, Seismic does Seismic makes a lot of stuff kind of to order so they don't always have things in stock but they do a really good job of quality and I, I recommend them as a brand that they're, they're a brand that I've purchased a lot of different things from they have a, um, a pretty good price for their items okay so that was one basically 130 uh, the Shure PSM 300 I actually got that off of um, Sweetwater, I think. So the price off of Sweetwater um, when I bought it was actually less than that. No, it was $7.99. So it was $7.99 when I got it off of Sweetwater. Um, that was because I had something else I traded in that didn't work. Some really bad tube amp. Um, but that's what that is. The uh, Sennheiser EW100 with the capsule. I forgot where I bought that from, but the price was um, kind of close to this price. It's a little cheaper than that. I think I got that actually off of Musicians Friends, and this is an Amazon listing, and um, mine was six twenty five dollars because I had some type of a, a discount. They were running a sale at that time, and the mixer, the Behringer mixer, was um, basically around this price. I don't really know where I got the mixer from. It wasn't expensive. I remember that's one of the reasons I bought it, um, but you see this little FX thing right here? This is a huge reason why I got this mixer was because I wanted to be able to add some um, reverb to my vocal channels so that I can, so it can separate it a little bit more. I've already had other mixers. I just didn't have one with the DSP in it. I actually had a, a bigger mixer that had the Behringer DSP units in it and I loved it. So I went ahead and uh, got a smaller version for my unit. So all of that stuff cost me about uh, $1,693. So we'll say roughly around $1,700 just to get started. Um, and this is this is like a, a great quality, great stuff. And this is excluding some of the cables because I already had stuff just over time. So I was able to make everything work with what I had. And that's kind of where, where it was. Okay, so we'll, we'll start there. That's the beginning. Now, this is the current setup. What I've done right here is I've broken down the, uh, the new items versus the older items that I already spent money on. And I've also broken out the new cost meaning this is what I've done so far. So the stuff that you saw in the last tab, all this stuff right here, it did amount to 1700, but um, that was already spent and I've already bought it and I have it, right? So I just bring it over here. One thing got dropped and that was the case. I don't need this case because I'm getting a new case. So let's start off with the new stuff. Um, the new case that I bought right here is a Seismic Audio Rack case. That's my simple name for it. It was 129.99. And obviously, like I told you, with Seismic, they do not uh, keep things in stock. Sometimes they actually run out of inventory and they have to go and make more. I think they just do that to keep their costs down so that they don't have a bunch of uh, overstock items and things like that because it's, it's specialty items in a way. But this right here was about 130 And so far, it seems like a really good buy. No issues with it. It's a 10U rack, meaning that it has um, 10 U's. If you don't know what U's are, look them up. They're basically just like units. Um, this is how you figure out how to put things into your actual uh, racks. It's these items right here, these um, holes. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, in order to actually rack 
the Sennheiser, I had to buy a rack mount and a cable. So the rack mount was $40 and the cable was about $45. And I'll show you what the um, rack mount looks like. This is the rack mount. Looks like it's gone down in price a little bit since I bought it actually. But it, it basically just lets you plug the unit into a rack. It's 1U. Okay, simple as that. But in order to um, connect your cables to the connect your antenna to the external um to the to the modify linkages you need to actually have these these am2 cables and um th that's where these little holes come into play okay let's go back here um so i didn't need it for the shore mic because shore came with it it was already packaged together I, it already had the the rack mount and the um, needed extension cable in order for me to to connect the antenna so that was pretty nice to, to have that already instead of trying to find it. Um, the next thing that I bought was a drawer because I needed to put the mixer into something. So um, I bought this Nave Point 3U drawer. So it's going to take up three U's here. And that drawer is pretty straightforward. Um, I like it because um, it, it can lock too. So if I need to lock it, I can lock it. But it's deep enough to where I can put um, my items in there. Let's see, this is 60, roughly $62. I paid the same price for it, okay? Not a big deal. And I also got a 2U, and this one I got because I needed to put more cables in the um, the case as well. So like if I needed to um, have my another microphone cable for backup or whatever cables, I could throw those in the microphones into this 2U unit, and I always planned on keeping either one of these drawers um, in the future state, but for right now, I have them both, okay? So now, um, the next thing, I'm going to skip down here to the art. I have a patch bay. And the reason why I have a patch bay is because I um, realized that running cables back and forth um, and getting into the back of the, of the case was going to become a pain. So I decided to go ahead and just do a patch bay. It seemed to be the easiest thing to do. So let's go to here. Okay, so here's the patch bay. The cool thing about this patch bay is that it's reversible. So one side has females like this, and you can take the, sc the screws off the side here, and you can flip it around, and then the other side has male. And why is that cool? Well, because, you know, depending on what I need it for, it, it can be flexible. Now, it's either everything is all in one. So if I flip it around, then everything is changed. So in order for me to actually to use this as an input and an output unit, I had to buy some adapters. And I got these really cool female to female adapters and male to male adapters from Amazon as well. And they work great. Let me see if I can find those here go right here. So what these allowed me to do was they allowed me to change the input for the front. So if I needed some of them to be input, say, for example, I'm running um, my guitarist. He wants to, to wants to connect into my, my unit, but I also want to send it to the front of the house. This gives me that ability to split that out and send it back out to the front of the house or do whatever. So I have the female to female in the front. I have the male to male in the back. Um, if you guys have any questions, basically this is plugged into this unit here. So if I'm if I'm using one of these, then the back and the other side you can't see is going to be this. Okay, I have to do that to convert the adapter type. Essentially what I'm doing, I'm just converting it from male to female or vice versa, okay? And I'm running splitters um, to split the signal and send it one to my mixer and send one back to the patch bay, the, the, the actual, the channel next to it. That's how I'm actually doing that. So that way, when I go to a venue, they can just plug in to the patch bay output and there's not any kind of recabling or something like that that needs to go on. So that's really, really helpful. But I needed something to be able to plug cables into my mixer without going into the back and trying to in, in plug, uh, plug all this other stuff up. And it just makes it simpler. But in order to also do that, I needed to buy some patch cables. So you'll see um, these patch cables here, just shorter runs. They're about three foot, and that's about all I needed. Um, I could have gone a little smaller, but I would have ran the risk of... Uh, you know, not being able to really run the distance that I needed. I wasn't sure. But three three feet is not horrible. It, it works. It, it's not super long. I've only had like 10 or 20 foot XLR cables. So I needed to have that. And those are $7 there. Um, but this is a total. So this is also including 
um, this right here and some other stuff that I did with these other cables. So, because I got four of these, not just one. All right, and see, I think I skipped something. The conditioner. You need a power conditioner. This is a power conditioner uh, surge protector, which is, where is that thing hiding? Here it goes, right here. Um, Furman, I've seen this in a lot of people's units. I figured it's probably a good brand. It's got a great rating, and I needed the surge protector. The cool thing about the back of this is that it's got all these different um, plugs. It's got some spacing here. So that allows me, if I have a really wide cable, I can spread it out a little bit better than if I didn't have that. Um, let's see what else. I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, so the big cost difference for all of this stuff, which which I actually bought two years after I bought my previous stuff. So this is 571. And this is the thing. I invested in myself because I knew I had shows. I knew I had a lot of things I was doing. That 1700, right? I made that back a long time ago. But um, I decided to go ahead and get ready for the next phase, which was to have more flexible inputs. So I also had a leftover um, fast audio, fast track audio 8R that um, I used um, in my old studio setup. And I'm actually connecting a computer into my um, s mixer right now. And that's why I have these patch cables too, because the patch cables allow me to run from the back of the fast track ultra 8R and allows me to um, plug it into the T um, TS inputs on the mixer so that I can have my left back track, my right back track, and also a separate channel for the click track. So that means I have three different channels coming from that audio interface that are going to allow me to have controls over what I want to hear. I also had to set up to where my drummer, if he wanted to connect and hear what was coming out of my mixer, he could get a mix too. And also if my guitarist, if he wanted to connect something to it, he can get a mix of it too. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Also, I'm running those same three channels from the audio interface into the um, into the art. So that's going to also, for the front of the house, uh, it's going to have the backing track left, backing track right, and um, the click actually goes, is going to go to my drummer. He can have that as a separate mix so that he can, get, he can um, control the level for that as well. He's got a little mixer that he can use that on. So as of that moment in time, the total spent on the system was around twenty-one thirty-five. Okay, so that's a, that's a good setup. That's not much of a change, but it, it definitely looks more professional now with um, my rack units and all the things that I have. It gives me more flexibility. Okay, that's great. Now, let's talk about the next phase. Boom! Here's a new one, right? I've got. Let me make sure this number is right. Yeah, it looks right. Yeah. So this is my new number. And the reason why that went down was because I got rid of the mixer. So what I have today is I have a brand new mixer. It's the Behringer XR18. And that is this sucker right here. It's a pretty popular mixer. A lot of people have it. Um, this is not the renewed one. This is a brand new one. I didn't want to go with the renewed one. I wanted one with the clean warranty and just no history of, an, of a malfunction. So what I'm going to basically use these for, now you can see something that's pretty cool about this, is that there's no physical knobs on this. It's completely controlled either by a computer or by um, Wi-Fi, okay, or, or Ethernet or whatever, but I'm not going to use Ethernet to control it. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to actually use this as, as many different things. It's going to be my main mixer for my personal monitor mix. Um, because it has eight outputs is going to allow me to have custom mixes galore, right? More than what I have right now. And also the fact that it's front facing like a patch bay is going to allow me to get rid of that patch bay. I won't need it anymore. So I'm going to be able to run splitters off of this. And um, if I need to, you know, share the signal with somebody. Also, the other part is that um, it's a 3U unit. So that means I'm going to have to get rid of um, either the drawer or whatever. I'm not really sure which one I'm going to get rid of, but um, the things that are going to go away will definitely be the um, the patch bay is going to go away, not needed anymore. Um, the fast track audio is going to go away, and I'll probably get rid of one of the drawers, maybe the the two year two U drawer. 
if if anything, just because I'll keep the three U because it's bigger and I can put more stuff in it. But um, yeah, so and I also need a U to um to run some cables from the back into this unit as well, just to make sure that I can connect. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it, though. As of right now, that puts me at a total of uh, two twenty five uh, ninety five, and that's with what I have in it right now. That's not the grand total because I've taken things out that I no longer use. So I'm repurposing that case that I bought um, the audio case. I'm repurposing that. That's going to be used for for moving my pedal board, my Line Six uh, HD pod, and the mixer here. I may end up using that in my studio as something for YouTube videos and stuff like that. But I haven't really decided if I'm going to do that yet. But yeah, that's pretty much what I got right now. So if you guys have any comments, any questions regarding the setup, please let me know. Like I said, today, I am literally going to work on getting to the future state, which is adding the, the Behringer mixer. And I have to work on getting the preset set up. I have to do a lot of different things to make this thing uh, be ready to rock and roll because like you see there's no there's no knobs on there so what i ideally want is i want to be able to cut this thing on have my preset loaded and if i needed to um do anything funky i can just use my phone or a computer i'm also going to use this as an audio interface too so that's why i'm getting rid of the um the fast track audio because with that usb plug right there port right there i'm actually going to connect a computer to it so we will be running the backing track back through this mixer in addition to using it as a regular mixer for incoming audio into the board so that's what it was set up to do and that's supposedly what the um the the reviews and all the um the the sales pitches have been saying it's going to do so i'll let you guys know how that turns out but it's going to take me a minute to play around with it to see what the good and the bad is with the particular unit so that's all i got for today again i am prodigy music man and i will chat with you guys later peace